All right, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some more powerful expressions built into Python that we can take advantage of when you're building your scene. Now, say, for instance, I have this circle in the scene, and this particular one has a radius of two units. But since I'm in metric mode, I'm going to call it two meters. All right, so let's go look in close in edit mode at this triangle. Let's see here, and you'll notice this has a radius, I mean, this has a length of one meter along here and this is 1.732 meters, and here's two meters on the hypotenuse, the diagonal leg, like this. Well, there's commands built into Python for even doing that, so I could actually just type in down here in my window, I could say hypotenuse, but it's not, it's just abbreviated, H-Y-O-P-O-T, and I could type in one comma 1.732, and close the parentheses, and you see it approximates 1.999, so essentially, two meters, so it's calculating the hypotenuse for us just by providing these two legs of it. So that's a nice little feature built in. Okay, how about something else? Well, maybe you have this here. You have pi over three is your angle. We know that that's 60 degrees, right? So you can type in degrees, uh, whoops, whatever, do there, I don't want to do that there. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see. All right, so now I could just type in down here, degrees, and you know how you do it, pi divided by 3. And it converts it, 59.999999 degrees. Or you could do it the same thing, radians. Radians, 60. Like that. And it converts it into 1.04719. Let's go take a look at this down here in... Uh, instead of having the, where is it, the edge length, we'll put the angles up. There it is, 1.047. So, though I've put the tutorials on earlier so you knew how to convert from degrees to radians, you could also just do it like this. So once you have the basic knowledge of all this stuff, then you can just wing through it. And then other things we're going to do, we're going to do things like finding an angle based on a, a given length. So let's say, for instance, we have this length here, 1.732. Well, we know that this now, if this is our angle, pi over 3, and we know the opposite side of the angle is the sine, and the adjacent side is the cosine, well, there's a way where you can find the inverse of, basically, you can find the angle from these lengths, because we've been doing it the other way around, right? We've had an angle, and we can find the lengths. Well, just like in most mathematics, you can find the inverse of it. So, there's a routine for that, and this is a really common routine, and it's basically, it's called the arctangent routine. So, how did I do that again? Hang on, what did I do there? Okay, I'll come down here, and it's, uh, you can use the arctangent, but it's ATAN2, arctangent, and then you put in Y and X, so 1.732, and for the sine, and then the other side is 1 for the cosine, and I put return, and it returns me the angle of 1.047 radians, all right? So it's y over x, which is the same as sine over cosine, because that's what the tangent is. Remember, I briefly mentioned it in one of the other videos where, let me see, I'll just get my little grease pencil. Remember the tangent, tangent is equal to the sine over the cosine, or the opposite over the adjacent, like this. And so all I did was use an inverse function that gave me the angle in return, which is the arctangent. When you met, but this is the command you need to use. I use this command all the time. It's fundamentally important. Now we'll have to address this in more detail, because it doesn't always return you the angle that you might expect based on the quadrant in which the angle is you're using so but we'll get into that in another lesson all right so that that's a couple of other routines that are built in here of course you have all your sine and cosine functions built in you have say a uh, factorial function you remember what factorial is where say factorial uh, factorial three is six all right i'm going to see if you have, and then factorial four is 24. Okay, so factorial of 3 means you're taking 3 times the number below it 2, so 3 times 2 is 6, and the number below it is 1, so 6 times 1 is 6, and that's how you answer. With factorial 4, you take 4 times the number below it, which is 3, so 4 times 3 is 12, 
and 3 times the below it is 2. So 12 times 2 is 24. So it just gives you this. So it's a very powerful function. You know, factorial 5 is going to be 5 times 4 is 20, times 3 is 60, times 2 is 120. So let's try it. Factorial 5 is like that. And these really become important when we get up into uh, more calculus. So uh, let me see. And I'll just kind of give you a few other quick. Those are really important ones. The degrees of the radians. You have sine, cosines, tangents. Uh, the power function I had mentioned. The, we have the exponential function, but I'll deal with that at another time. Uh, let me see. And yeah, okay. Well, that's it for now. And I'll see you in the next lesson.